Hi there, I'm Bree Pettis, and you're watching a Make Magazine video here. I've got Joe Grand with me, and he is a hardware hacker, and he is, he's gone to school for electronics and made all sorts of really cool things. He's made some kits for us, and he's going to teach us some really cool stuff about electronics, <laughs> some basic techniques and skills. What's the first one you've got for us here, Joe? So, first one we're going to get into is soldering, which uh, is important for any time you want to modify electronics or build a kit. Um, rip apart electronics, anything, really just learning the basics of soldering and desoldering, which is what we'll do next. So the first thing, soldering, you need a soldering iron. Um, what we have here is a standard um, uh, Weller soldering iron. Um, there's all different types of irons. Weller, you can go to Radio Shack and get one. Uh, what you really need to look for is just having a, a nice tip um, that can get hot. And yes. um, that's pretty much it. Anything that gets hot can act as a soldering iron, but look for a good one. We have our soldering stand, our sponge, which we use for uh, making sure that the soldering tip is clean, um, that we can get good heat transfer, which is an important part of soldering. Um, so we have our sponge, and we'll actually moisten the sponge with our low-tech method of dumping some water on it. Usually this is easier with a water bottle or going to your sink. Um, but you really just want to get the sponge wet enough where you can clean the tip of the iron, and you'll hear it sort of Makes sizzle. a really nice sound. Yeah. yeah. But you don't want it too wet where you're just going to cool down the iron too much. So it has to sort of be not too wet, but not too, not too dry where it doesn't actually do any good. So you have your clean soldering tip, um, and you have the piece you want to solder to. Now for those people who are like don't even know what soldering is, solder, soldering is basically melting metal to connect two parts. Right, it's melting metal, something called solder, which is an alloy. What, what I have here is a lead-based solder, which um, actually there's some new restrictions on the fact that um, you can't manufacture products with solder that contains lead or any components that contain lead. But for hobbyist purposes, using a lead-based solder is fine, and I just happen to have 50 reels of this at home, so that's what I use. Um, lead, uh, some sort of other alloys that are used to basically fuse two pieces of, of metal together. But it's not like welding where you're actually fusing the metal together. This is just melting solder and holding things into place. Yeah. So you wouldn't want to melt something that you were going to, like hang off of because it's, right, it's not right. like it's not uh, steel it's not steel exactly it does the job for what, what we want to use it for okay so your iron's hot your sponge is wet so iron's hot what you want to do before you even start soldering wear your goggles you have glasses so if you're wearing glasses it's fine I like to wear goggles they look cool they feel cool and uh, protects your eyes from any hot flux which is a component of the solder or any hot solder um, hitting you in the eye damaging your eye uh, which has happened to me. I had some solder right under my eye one day working in the lab up close and almost hit me and that's when I said, okay, it just every popped day. Off? Popped right off of popped right off of the uh, of the soldering iron, hit me right below the eye. I said, okay, that's it. I'm going to wear goggles from now on. So that's what I wear them for. And also, once we, when we build a kit later, um, when you're cutting off leads of electronics, of, of parts with your wire snips, yes, those things go right. They can hit you right in the eye. So goggles are good. Wear your safety wear, goggles. Wear your goggles. So we have our iron. We have our solder, we have our um, circuit board here. What we're actually going to do, we need to insert the component that we want to solder. Um, I have a resistor here, which is just one of many components. We'll insert this into the board. And there's all sorts of different ways to insert a, a component into the board. For If we're building a kit or something like this where we have a through-hole component where the component mm -hmm. goes through the circuit board, we simply just put the part through the hole, and then I like to bend the leads a little bit to the side so if we flip the board over to the side that we have to solder on, the part doesn't fall it out. It won't fall out. Yeah, so sort of like magic. So what we do now is our part's ready to go. We have our soldering iron. And I mentioned this earlier, the, the main key to soldering is good heat distribution. So you want to make sure that the soldering iron gets hot and can transfer heat to both the pad of the circuit board and also the component lead. And you want to touch both of those at the same time with your iron for about a second. Uh, <coughs> make sure everything's nice and hot, and then you apply your solder. So this is really important because I've had problems whenever I've soldered. When I, when I first started soldering, I just thought, oh, you just have something hot right. and you connect yeah, you just it. Put, a, put a ball of solder on here. And that's what I see a lot of people doing is they'll put some solder onto the tip of the iron and then touch it to the lead. And that doesn't do anything. You might, you'll usually get something called a cold solder joint where... What's a cold solder joint? A cold solder joint, basically, it looks, it's a connection that looks like it's soldered, but it's really not. So internally, there might not be a connection, but externally, you might still see a ball of solder. So you might say, okay, that looks good, and then a few minutes later or a few days later, you're working on your project, and you're like, how come that doesn't work? Or it might work sometimes because the connection just isn't there. 
So heat, good heat transfer is what prevents cold solder joints. And having both the things that you're doing, that makes sense, that both things heat up, the yeah. solder heats up, it's all heated up. You want, to make, you want to make sure both the lead and the pad are heated at the same time. Because if you just heat the pad, but not the lead, then all of the solder is going to melt onto the pad. It won't melt, it won't stick to the lead. So you want to heat everything here, up. Let's get a close-up of you doing the okay. solder here. So when we're soldering this point, I'll heat everything for about a second or two. I'll add the solder, um, and basically hold the iron there to make sure that the solder actually flows around the connection. And then lift the iron off and wait a few seconds for the connection to cool. And some people might be wondering, how much solder do you actually add uh, when you're soldering a connection? And you really want to just make sure that there's enough solder to fill the hole and also make contact with the pin, uh, and you end up with a nice little ball of solder. Not a complete blob, but just a nice ball. Now, one of the things that happened to me recently, I did some soldering recently, and I hadn't done it in a long time, is I smelled the solder, and it brought all sorts of memories back. But yeah. I'm guessing that that stuff is not good for you to be soldering. You don't really want to breathe solder fumes. Um, I did it for about... 20 years before I actually ended up buying um, a, a portable solder fume sucker, a fume extractor um, from Contact East, I believe the, the, the company was. So it will suck away all the fumes, but you don't really want to breathe that in. There's, there's lead, uh, there's just other materials you don't really want to breathe in. Okay. So if you don't have a, a fan or if you don't have some sort of extractor, just hold your breath as you're soldering. So the final step, obviously once your component's in there, you want to cut the leads off. You don't want stray leads hanging out all over the place when you're building your project. You want to keep ni everything nice and flush. So basically you just, I hold on to one side of the lead, clip it with the other, and now we're done. Make sure that this thing doesn't fly and hit you in the eye. I like the way that you held on to that, so it doesn't go Yeah, yeah, that, that's the thing. It, you can also, if you're working in, in your room or in, in your kitchen, wherever your lab is set up, you don't want these pieces going all over the place. Going into the rug and then stabbing you through the foot, not yeah, good. Yeah, not good. Okay. Oh no, we just found out that's the wrong part. We should have put a different one in there. What do we do now? Well, now we have to remove the components somehow. Desoldering um, is the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bunch of different methods to desoldering. I'll show you three different ways, mm -hmm. um, though there might even be others out there. These are the ones that I prefer. And it really depends on if you have a through-hole component, like our resistor, or if you have a surface mount component where all of the connections of the part are on one side of the board. And that's no what we'll show you later. Through. No holes going through. Okay. So we'll show you that in, in our third section. So okay. the first thing that we're going to use is something called solder wick. Desoldering technique number one. Desoldering technique number one is solder wick. Great. And um, solder wick you can get at Radio Shack or any electronic store, um, which basically, when uh, it comes in contact with molten solder, it just sucks the solder right up into this. It wicks the solder away from the pad onto this braid, which okay. is really, really useful. So what we'll do with our resistor <laughs> is try to wick away as much solder as we can from the board and then we'll try to just wiggle the part out with whatever remaining solder is there. So we'll give this a try. First what we'll do is lay the wick down uh, on the pad that we want to desolder and then just like soldering you want to heat both the pad and the wick at the same time to make sure everything gets hot and then just sort of pull it away and you can see all of the solder from that pad got sucked up into the braid. What you'll do once you've soldered up, once you've sucked up this, the solder onto the braid, when you don't want this, you just clip it off and throw it away. Now you have your braid ready to go for the next time you have to desolder. Fresh again for the next desolder. Yeah, exactly. So we'll try doing the other side. All right. So cool. So let's let's desolder this. Yeah, up. we'll just keep going and, and see if this actually works. So again, just lay the wick down, suck up all the solder. And you wait a few seconds until. You think all the solder is gone, and usually it works, and I think it did. So now all we have left is our resistor poked into the board with a little bit of solder holding on to the lead in the pad. And that's something that we can simply just heat the, heat the remaining um, pin and then pull it out carefully either with our hands. Uh, it would be better to use a, uh, a needle nose pliers because it gets really hot, mm -hmm. um, which I don't have. You could use the end of your... Uh... Yeah, I guess we could use one of these. So use some sort of device to grab onto your uh, component so you don't burn your fingers. And just carefully heat both sides and pull it out carefully until your part comes out. Voila. And that's desoldering. Desoldering. Yeah, which is... This method it is a little more difficult than soldering, um, especially if you bend the leads of your part back onto the board. It's not a straight 
way in, so you kind of have to wiggle the part to get it out. Um, so you want to practice this on maybe some test boards before you go do it on a project that you don't want to break. So if I had something that I needed to desolder, I might practice on some other like less important... Yeah, practice, pull something out of the trash and mess with that, or, or look at a broken printer or a broken computer. Yeah. Experiment with that first, um, because you don't want to end up damaging your printed circuit board um, or your component if you don't have others. Okay. So that's number one. That's number one. Second way to desolder. Desoldering method number two is using something called a solder sucker um, or a solder vacuum. That is a cool looking tool. It's a cool looking device. It's sort of like a, a combination of a syringe and a baster. Uh, you basically push down this spring loaded thing at the top, which loads the, the solder sucker. When you hit this button, the spring releases and it will suck up any material that's, uh, that's in contact with this pointed tip. So what we'll do is heat up a, a, an area of solder. Mm -hmm. When the solder is molten, we'll load this thing and suck the solder right out. All right, let's do it. All right. So what I have on this circuit board is one pad that's filled with solder. And in general, you might see um, a component still stuck in there. So if there is a component stuck in there and your solder wick isn't working out or you don't have solder wick, um, you might try to just pull the part out, but you'll have solder left over in the pad. So using the solder sucker, we can just suck that right out. And what I like to do is heat one side of the board uh, with my iron and then stick the solder sucker on the other side of the board and suck the molten solder right through. So we can do that. I'll heat one side. There's the soldering iron. And then on the other side, stick my solder sucker. Sucked up the solder. And now we should have a hole. So that's desoldering with the solder sucker. On to desoldering method number three. All right, so desoldering method number three is um, desoldering surface mount components, which is uh, a little more fun, I think, uh, than desoldering through hole components, but it requires a totally different method. What I like to use is something called the Chip Quick SMD, Surface Mount Device Removal Kit. And this is a, a really interesting product that um, somebody came up with that essentially reduces the melting point of solder that's on the board, so we can use this SMD special alloy, uh, solder it onto our part, and it will, the solder will remain molten and long enough we can just push the part right off of the board. So normally solder is just liquid for a short time when it's very hot, and right. this is reducing that amount of amount so you can get it really hot and it'll be liquid, and then it won't get solid again exactly. until it cools As, down farther. Right, so uh, yeah, e exactly, perfect. And these surface mount parts aren't like going through holes, they're just like stuck on there, right? Right, so the surface mount parts on this board, we have um, three different parts, and we're going to desolder the middle part where there's just pins resting on top of the board. And you see that a lot with, with more uh, integrated high-tech products um, where surface mount is used a lot because machines can actually pick and place automatically the parts onto the board. You don't need somebody to physically solder um, parts on. So it's a good skill to know. So what we're going to do is inside of our chip quick set, we have um, an alcohol pad, which we'll use at the end for cleaning. We have our special alloy, which basically looks just like solder. It does. Um, but it's a little fatter uh, than the solder that we're using, and it's also more brittle. So this actually breaks. That's how you know if you happen to, to lose some of this in your, your big spool of solder, you'll, you'll know that it's still um, the alloy. Then we have some flux. And flux is, is an important component um, to soldering and desoldering. Mm -hmm. uh, it helps with heat transfer from the iron to any metal on the board. Uh, flux is also built into certain types of solder, which is useful. It also helps to remove oxidation from parts to help keep them clean mm -hmm. as you're soldering. So if you, if you pick up an old resistor from a board, you might have hacked apart and, and removed some components, for example. You might see some oxidation, some dirt um, on the part, and you want to really clean that up before you solder it. So using flux will help with that. Because flux is built into the solder, a lot of times you don't have to worry about it, and it will just do it automatically for you. Um, then we have uh, our plunger, which is used in conjunction with the flux uh, to apply it to the board. So what we're going to do first is apply our flux to all of the pins that we want to desolder. And we just goop it on. You can be pretty generous with the flux. It's cheap, and it's easy to clean up once we use our alcohol pad later on. So. Just want a lot of flux in there. Make sure that we get good heat transfer to this part. So once that's done, we'll take our alloy and our soldering iron. And this step is just like soldering. You apply your iron to the pins and just apply 
as much of the uh, alloy as you can to get in contact with all of the pins. And you'll see all of the flux burning off as we're doing this. So now we have a nice big blob on one side. We'll repeat that on the second side. That is a very big blob. Big blobs on both sides. And you can tell it's still molten if we just touch it, even after a few seconds. So what we do at this point is just make sure that the uh, alloy hits all of the pins. And when it does, the part just slides right off the board. Oh, wow. That was so, very easy. Very, very easy to do. Um, the board looks a little messy, but all we have to do is sort of push off some of this solder. And then we'll use... Uh, our alcohol pad to clean that up in the next step. We just push this off. One other thing we can do instead of pushing it off, which gets sort of messy, is use our desoldering braid. And have to which is this. desoldering trick number which one. Which is desoldering trick number one. Um, and basically use our desoldering braid to suck up all of the molten solder on these pads, the molten alloy. And just run this along the pads. You do want to be careful when you're desoldering or soldering to not apply the heat for too long uh, where you could damage the board. So leave it on for just as, as long as you need to, um, a few seconds at a time. If you're desoldering something or if you're soldering a part that's really difficult, um, maybe remove the heat after a while, let things cool down, and then continue. So why is cleaning important? Why do you have to clean it up? Well, we have to clean it up because we have all of the flux on the board now. We might have some extra alloy on there. We want to clean it up, get the board ready in case we want to solder a new part onto it. It's really sticky right now. And gooey. It looks and, gooey, yeah. 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 So what we do is, is we've already sucked up um, as much of the remaining alloy as we can, so we use our alcohol pad. You can use any, any alcohol pad you have available. Like a first aid um, alcohol pad? First aid alcohol pad works fine. In the kit, the Chip Quick kit, it comes with one, but usually you'll run out of alcohol pads way before you run out of the alloy. So you just have some extra pads lying around, you just clean it off, and again, you can be generous moving the alcohol pad around because it's not going to destroy any circuitry. You just want to make sure that you don't power on the circuitry until the alcohol um, has evaporated from the part. Yeah, let all liquids go away from circuitry before right, you power Right, right. Which you could do. You can blow on it if you want, or you can just watch it evaporate. All right, we've come to the end of this skill building video. You've learned how to solder, and you've learned multiple ways of desoldering. Thank you very much, Joe, for sharing your expertise. Cool. Thanks, and have fun. All right, yeah, go find some stuff. And, well, you could go find a kit. What kind of things should people be soldering if they're um, just beginning? Really, there's a lot of kits out there that people can build. and it, that, That's pretty satisfying because instead of just soldering components onto, onto prototype boards, you can actually build something cool. And when you're something done soldering, work. yeah, you learn how to solder, you learn how to remove components, you learn how to cut components, all of the basic skills that we're going through here. Um, but you get something that works at the end. So there's a bunch of kits on the Make Store, a mm -hmm. um, bunch of some magazines. Some of which you, you, you designed. Some, some of which I've designed, yeah. Um, so you can get those. And uh, just lots of, lots of different projects you can work on from magazines, obviously Make Magazine, mm -hmm. um, the Make Zine um, online blog, tons of projects. And uh, basically just don't be afraid of, of ripping things open, soldering them, removing parts, and uh, trying to make things do they were never intended to do, really. You know, one of the things that's become really clear in watching you solder and desolder is that it's actually not as hard as I thought it would be. To, you know, right. You could... Pretty much, I feel like anybody who had a soldering iron and solder could actually solder. Anyone can do this. It's really just having the right technique. It's, it's an art form. Right. If you learn the right way to do it, it's just like painting with watercolor. If you learn how to paint the right way, then you can create some pretty amazing things. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank cool. you for watching. And look forward to a future skill building video that we'll have for you soon. Stay tuned.